It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. Iron ore giant Valet has done it again. It has caused the rupture of yet another dam in Brazil, hurtling sludge into a rural valley in Milas Geria State, killing 60 people so far. Some 300 are still missing. And joining me now to discuss the disaster is Michael Fox. Mike is a freelance journalist living in Florinopolis, Brazil. Thanks so much for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me. Mike, tell me uh, exactly what happened and, of course, about the company Valet that is now responsible for two such disasters. So on, on Friday afternoon, there was a break in the dam, the tailings dam, in their iron ore production. This was a dam uh, that had held this reservoir that had been unused for the last three years, uh, but it was holding roughly 12 million cubic meters of sludge. It broke, uh, it cruised down the hill and, and went into a valley, literally knocking out much of the, the valley complex there. It hit a lunchroom where at least 100 workers were there lunching. We know that it knocked out several buses because they found some of those remains, covered up a posada, a hostel, and some parts of other communities. So obviously rescue workers um, went into effect. That was on Friday evening afternoon, and they've been searching for people ever since. Uh, vale is the, the largest mining company in Brazil. It used to be state-owned. It was privatized in the 1990s. Uh, it's the second largest mining company in the world, uh, and they have many operations here in, in Minas Gerais. This is just a, a, a devastating, a devastating thing to happen. Like you said, just three years after the Mariana disaster, the Mariana disaster was the largest environmental catastrophe in the history of Brazil. This one uh, is looking, it might be less so, but in terms of the death count, it already has three times more dead than, than, than the the disaster that happened three years ago. Mike, now Bolsonaro, the newly elected president of Brazil, was quick to distance himself from what had just happened in terms of the rupture of the mine. How responsible is the government for what has happened? This is really key, Charmini. I mean, first off, just to look at what Bolsonaro did say, he said, this has nothing to do with the federal government. And that puts into perspective kind of Bolsonaro's vision for the environment and for his what he looks to do for his for for his government his administration in the coming years. But if you look back just at 2017, according to the latest figures from uh, Brazil's National Water Association, and those are the latest figures that we have is for 2007 not not 2018, only 3% of of Brazil's dams, 3% of Brazil's 24,000 dams were inspected. Now, that is a major issue, and it can show what the flaws are in terms of going forward. In, at the same year, 2017, only 23% of the f federal funds budgeted to inspect, monitor, and operate dams were actually spent on that. So the federal government has, obviously, it, it, it should be definitely held responsible, A, for following up and, and, and monitoring these things, making sure that these dams are structurally intact, and these things aren't going to happen again, um, but also you know, going after the damages and actually holding private companies responsible. And these are two areas that it's going to be really hard to see how the Bolsonaro government is going to fall through with that. Now, Bolsonaro's Minister of Inst Institutional Security came out um, on the day after this happened, and he said, yeah, we need to create new regulation. We need to create new laws. We need to be much stronger to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Now, we're going to find out if this is just lip service or if they actually mean it, because like I said, Bolsonaro ran on a platform of weakening environmental relation, uh, of, of doing less inspection, and of really opening the reins to development and to corporations to really be able to, 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 to take care of themselves and inspect and, and monitor themselves. Um, so we're going to see if, if Bolsonaro and if his government is actually able to do that. Now, Dodds, the, um, the attorney general, has come out and said they really want to hold people responsible. They need to really focus on how are we going to continue to inspect and monitor and really uh, you know, up the level across this. But like I said, there's 24,000 dams, and this is just in the area of mining, and these are just dams. We're not talking about the environmental, um, you know, regulations and the, and the potential environmental damage of every other aspect of industry, whether it's agribusiness um, or, or anything else in Brazil. So this is going to be an issue that we're going to see what actually happens. And if we're looking at what Bolsonaro has said so far and what is pretty clear his campaign flat 
platform is, uh, deregulate as much as possible and get the environment out of the picture, it's not looking good. And uh, Mike, we cannot ignore that this is also an issue for the workers because as insecure workplaces like mines and dams, uh, obviously in this particular case, there were so many workers in the way of the sludge. Absolutely, Charmini. That, the, the, the big tragedy here is from Vale's own workers. You, we still have 300 disappeared and most of those are Vale employees. And another tragedy, and I'm so glad you brought it up, Charmini, is the fact that under the 2017 labor reform, one of the items that was actually included in that, it puts a cap on the amount of compensation workers and their families can receive in the case of tragedies like this. So basically, under the new 2017 labor reform, workers and their families can only receive from three um, minimum salaries or from, from three of their own salaries uh, up till 50 salaries. So that means that a valley worker that was just killed in this massive tragedy may only receive a couple thousand reais. His family may only receive a couple thousand reais in uh, in compensation for that. And the limit, the cap on that, would only be, would be up to 50 um, of their own salary. So that if they were making a thousand reais a month, that would be 50,000 reais is the top that that family could receive. Now they're talking about somebody's lives. They're putting a cap on somebody's lives. And if you look back at Mariana, the people, the families only received. Um, compensation for the Miata disaster three years later, just this last very end of 2018. So the families here, A, they're missing their loved ones. A, they've got, they're, they're, they're facing this massive tragedy in their, in their town. And B, it's very likely they're going to be waiting years, if that, um, to actually receive some sort of compensation from the company and, and from the government. All right, Mike, let's get a grip on how large this company is. It's not like some small company who is not able to or have the resources to manage these dams and mines. I mean, Valley, I know Valley Inco in Canada, they're so global that is, I think, quite rather, you know, in terms of profits and in terms of the stock exchange, they're a company doing rather well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, like I said, it's the second largest mining company in the world. So we're talking huge um, billions of dollars in assets. Stocks did fall following this. They fell 20 percent. The government has frozen as much as 11 billion reais worth of uh, funds in Valley's accounts. That's roughly $3.5 million. I mean, $3.5 billion. It's also taken $350 million uh, and in fines from Valley. We're talking about a very, very large country that has a company that has operations uh, all around all around Brazil and all around the world. And, and like you said, it's not like they don't have the ability to follow through with things. So in 2018, last year, there was a private company that came in and did certify that the mine was in good structural, uh, in, 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 in good standing. structural position, but in good structural standing. But we can see that obviously this has happened again, three years after the other one. And this raises much, much deeper questions about, A, what are the mines themselves doing, those companies doing? Uh, so they came out, they said after the, the Mariana disaster, the CEO came out and said, no more Marianas. We're going to fix this. We're going to resolve a bunch of things. And they did implement a couple of features in order to try and make sure this didn't happen again. One of them was the alarm system. We don't know if that alarm went off or if it just went off with too little amount of time to actually get people out. Regardless, it did not stop this dam from collapsing. And this raises major issues about what the potential could be for other dams around the country, whether it's Vale or whether it's tons. There's 24,000 dams across Brazil, and many of them are from mining companies. Uh, literally just two days ago on Saturday night, they stopped the rescue mission um, and they suspended operations in terms of the rescue mission because there were, there were fears that a second dam, that, that this one holding water in the same complex might itself also break. So they started to pump water from there. Apparently, it was raining there. And they started to pump water out of the second dam. That lasted from 8 p.m. until 4 a.m. They were about to start rescue operations again. And then the emergency signal went off, and they had to evacuate as many as 3,000 people from low-lying neighborhoods just outside of Brumaginho. So this is the reality. The first dam broke. The second dam they were afraid of. That is now under control. The second dam apparently is not at risk of breaking. But it shouldn't be. This is not the type of crisis that you need to be living day in and day out. Is the dam going to break? This is just 
This just should never happen. And that's what Brazilians are up in arms about. That's what they've been talking about. That's what the front covers of every newspaper has been talking about. This cannot happen again. And uh, Mike, do we know about the environmental disaster and, of course, what was contained in that sludge? I mean, this is uh, obviously uh, waste from a mine. Uh, has it contaminated the entire valley? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, we know that. We know that from the Mariana disaster. Now, like I said, there was less sludge here, but this whole valley has been contaminated. Animals, they've already, the animals they've been able to save, they've had to kill them because uh, this is a major issue, and it'll be a major issue for the people living in and around Bruma Jingim and also the rescue workers that are there. We're talking about people that are in the mud beyond the daily using these big, long kind of spear type things, these big staffs, in order to try and get down into, into the mud to try and see if they can find some sort of a, 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 a metal structure, a car, people. That's what they're using. This is a, this is what, it's actually what they're calling you know, it's, 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 it's a day in and day out. It's very, very slow. It's ant's work is what they've called it. And so it's, it's a disaster for, for the people and the environmental disaster. It's, it's huge. Now, to keep this into perspective, this has already hit some of this mud. The sludge has already gone into one of the major rivers, which feeds the, um, the, the, the potable water system and the water system for Belo Horizonte. Belo Horizonte, which is the capital of Minas Gerais, is only about 60 kilometers away from where this complex was. So it's already hits part of the water uh, system. Now they've been able to isolate that. They say there's no problem. Um, and currently people in Belo Horizonte have not been affected from this, but this is definitely, that's gone into the water and it's already killing off massive amounts of fish in kind of some of those major rivers just outside of Belo Horizonte. So environmentally speaking, it's, it's, it's a disaster. Is it as big a catastrophe as Mariana? It is not because Mariana literally traveled through the river systems and made it all the way from the hills into the Atlantic Ocean, um, killing parts of you know the the ecosystem along the way. So even bigger for Mariana, but this is still really really bad. All right, Michael, uh, we'll leave it there for now. Obviously, this is a disaster of the size uh, we'll have to return to and, and cover the damage that it has left behind. I thank you so much for joining us today. For having me, Sean. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.